Alright, in this video we're going to talk about types of stretching. We're going to talk about static, active, dynamic, functional, PNF stretching and ballistic. Let's start with static. Static is probably one of the most common forms of stretching most people use. Uh, typically it's best to do your stretching after you've done your workout. So you would warm up first to get the blood pumping and and warm up the muscle you would do your main activity and then you would do your cool down at the end and after your cool down or as part of your cool down you would do your static stretching so static stretching has not been proven to prevent injury if done right before a workout now yes static stretching can improve your flexibility and having a greater range of motion will definitely prevent your chance of injury but we're talking about as some sort of warm-up trying to use your your static stretching will not warm up the muscle and you've got just as high of an incidence of getting injured as somebody not doing a warm-up so but a warm-up has been shown to prevent injury so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about static stretching this one you're gonna hold the stretch at the end at the end of the range of motion. So a common stretch if, if I leaned over to try to touch my toes and I just held that stretch and I held it for about 10, 20 seconds or so that would be static stretching and that's what you want to do is you want to hold those for a certain period of time. Active stretching is using an opposing muscle group so you use your opposing muscle group to perform the stretch. So a good example of that would be plantar flexion or dorsi flexion. So if you don't know what that is, if I pointed my toes and just held that, that's going to be holding a stretch. So I'm using the opposing muscle group to hold that stretch. And whereas if I started trying to point my toes back up towards my head, that would be dorsiflexion. And again, I'm using the opposite muscle group to kind of hold that stretch. So that would be a form of active stretching. Then you have dynamic where you go through a range of motion. So you travel through a range of motion. So a good example of that, if, if I did a series of high kicks, those would be dynamic stretching, or a good example of dynamic stretching. So that would be a dynamic stretch. Um, Functional would be more sport specific. So that's probably the best example I can give. Sport specific. So going through those movements that you're going to use in your particular sport. So like a wrestler might do a bunch of lunges and they would hold that lunge position um, to shoot for singles and doubles because that's the same position they're going to use. So these functional exercises are most of the movements you're going to make during the activity that you're about to do. So they, they are essentially sport specific or activity activity specific if you're not playing a sport. And then PNF stretching stands for let's see if I can spell this out proprioceptive neuromuscular neuromuscular facilitation 
facilitation. So essentially with PNF stretching, what's going to happen is, let me kind of draw down here. This will make more sense. Let's say we have a person, let's draw a little stick figure here, laying on the ground with their arms out. And they've got their leg being pushed by this other person here. So this other person standing here and they're pushing against that leg. So this person here, person, let's call him person number one, is holding that leg in position. Person two, the person being stretched, is pushing back against that resistance. Person one here just holds the leg and allows this person to have something to push up against. So you do that for about 10 seconds. They continue to push for 10 seconds and you just hold it there. Normally what I'll do is lean my whole body against it because if they're really strong they may be able to push against my arms. So I just kind of lean my body on their leg and let them push back against it and then tell them to release. So they quit contracting the hamstring. So the hamstring will be right here. So we qu they quit contracting the hamstring and then I step up a little closer to them and push this leg a little further this time. So now I'm holding it a little further away and so they push back against it again. And we do this for 10 seconds and you'll normally do this for several sets. So each time you'll be able to push their leg a little further after they release and quit pushing back against you and that allows you to go through a greater range of motion. How this works is let me draw that leg out. So here's their leg. that I'm pushing against here. So I'm pushing against that or leaning against it. And here we have the hamstrings, which is the muscle group we're trying to, to, to stretch. So as they push here, and I just hold, so they're pushing in my direction, causing this muscle to contract, causing the hamstring to contract. There's a little organ within the tendons here called the Golgi tendon organ or GTO and what that does is it prevents somebody from tearing this muscle away from where it's attached so if the tendon and I'm just gonna draw this out here so here's the tendinous attachment that attaches to the hamstring so there's the hamstring and the Golgi tendons found in there so if the tendon gets stretched too much and activates this Golgi tendon organ, it'll cause this muscle to relax. So that's what this person's doing here is they're pushing back against me. It's contracting this muscle which stretches out this tendon here and activates that Golgi tendon organ and it says you need to relax muscle and so the muscle relaxes and allows the person pushing to push your leg a little further after you quit contracting. So that's how that works. Um, a good example of this is, is somebody that's doing some sort of arm curl. Now this isn't used in stretching, but this is how the, the Golgi, Golgi tendon organ functions. Let's say I'm lifting too much weight and I'm curling this weight here. And it's way too much for what I can handle and the bicep is about to tear away from where it's attached. Well, to prevent me from tearing that muscle away, that Golgi tendon will organ will activate and cause this bicep to relax causing me to lower the arm and quit applying force to the bicep so I don't tear that bicep away so it's a safety mechanism so that's how PNF stretching works let's talk about ballistic stretching we have really moved away from ballistic stretching in the fitness areas because it's so dangerous you still see it sometimes in gymnastics but PNF stretching has really started to take over in gymnastics but ballistic stretching you'll still see it so think of it as you're holding this stretch but you're bouncing in the stretch so probably the best example I can give that give to you is somebody that's doing the splits here so here's a person doing the splits but they're bouncing up and down inside the splits well here's the danger of that let's say let's go back to our example of the hamstring. This is normally where a lot of these injuries occur. So here's our hamstring. 
And inside that hamstring, let me change colors, we have little muscle spindles. And these are a different type of proprioceptor. Over here, we, we were talking about proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Well, the Golgi tendon organ, the GTO, is a proprioceptor. And that's the one that you want to activate when you're doing certain forms of stretching. These muscle spindles are all found all through the muscle, and we do not want those to activate, or at least not when we're stretching. So if we bounce up and down in this stretch, at the bottom portion of our stretch, if these get stretched too much and they activate, they cause the muscle to want to contract and recoil. So if it contracts and recoils right at the bottom part of our stretch, or where we're at the greatest range of motion, it can cause us to tear that muscle because it's going to contract right as we're at the deepest part of that stretch and it can cause us to tear the muscle and we don't want that. That's the reason we've moved away from ballistic stretching. You've got to be really careful on how you use this because as you're bouncing up and down you can cause the muscle spindles to activate right at the bottom of the bounce causing the muscle to want to contract and when it contracts it's going to tear the muscle so you, you could pull this hamstring if we were talking specifically about that particular muscle so this is all your basic stretching so you have static where you're just holding it active where you're using other opposing muscle groups to initiate the stretch you have dynamic where you're going through a range of motion it also has a little bit of muscle strength involved because you have to have the muscle strength in order to lift that limb through the range of motion so it's kind of a combination of going through a range of motion and a little bit of muscle strength you have functional which is a, a relatively new form of stretching it's actually not new we were we've always done this with calisthenics um, but you're it's a activity specific stretch where whatever you're about to do you go through those movements and kind of hold them then you have PNF stretching which is proprioceptive neuromuscular neuromuscular facilitation but we're talking specifically about activating the Golgi tendon organ proprioceptor so that's the one we want to cause to um, relax the muscle because if it gets activated it relaxes the muscle but ballistic stretching we've moved away from it because it can cause a different type of proprioceptor to fire which is a muscle spindle and we don't want that to happen because it'll cause the muscle to want to contract right as we're doing our stretch which could cause us to pull a muscle or tear a muscle so I hope this was useful and I hope it explained the various forms of stretching and how you would use them and I hope to see you in the next video